Hey everyone, Jason Shadrick here with PremierGuitar.com and we're with Doug Red Redler, guitar tech for Rich Robinson and the Black Crows, and Ron Tor in Madison. And you're gonna walk us through a bunch of guitars and amps and effects that Rich is bringing out on this tour. Thanks for um, stepping away from the football game. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tough call, but uh, but we snuck it out. So let's start down here on the end and kind of walk through uh, walk through what he's bringing on the road now. Um, well, we pretty much use everything here. A lot of tunings, capos. Um, start from the beginning. This is um, a true sart. It's um, a steel master. But what's interesting about this one is you know, most of James's guitars are metal, steel, mm -hmm. like that guy. This is actually um, beechwood. Mm. Um, really beautiful guitar. Um, we use this a lot. We use it on um, Thorn of My Pride. Mm -hmm. And what's that tuned to? Um, right now, a lot of the guitars are tuned to G. Um, but this will have a capo for Thorn. Uh -huh. The G tuning, which Rich uses a lot since we, you know, he plays a lot of slide, is um, D, G, D, G, B, D. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of the guitars, you know, and we'll, we'll capo in different positions. This um, is interesting. This is a reissue, 1962 SG, and um, our friend Cobra in New York City um, relics the guitars, mm -hmm. Cobra guitars. So we just give it to Cobra, and he uh, he beats him up and drags him around the parking lot, and <laughs> adds a lot of mojo to the guitar. And it's a really cool guitar. It's fooled a lot of people, um, and it's got the um, the Maestro um, bar on there. And this is um, it's G with the with the capo. So um, there's gonna be no speak, no slave tonight. We're gonna open the show with this. You mentioned before we started shooting that you guys lost quite a bit of gear in the in Hurricane Sandy. And funny enough, that these two guitars survived. Um, we had the Atlantic Ocean went into the Hudson River. The Hudson River um, rose about 20 feet, went through the entire town, and. Uh, picked up sewage and everything else on the way and ended up in uh, our warehouse. Mm -hmm. So everything was, um, we had seven feet of water in there, mm -hmm. mud, filth, everything. And these, this guitar survived because it was in an old Gibson, you know those old plastic Gibson cases they mm -hmm. did in the 70s? So this guitar was in that and ended up floating to the top. Oh wow. <laughs> Which was incredible. This guy survived too. I think he was just on top of the pile so when, every, when the water lifted everything and dropped it, it just, it just survived. Mm -hmm. And there's a few others that, um, that made it. Um, a lot of guitars are getting restored as well, uh -huh. which I'll show you. Um, and Rich had um, a 63 335 that really took um, a beating in that. We're having um, R&S Guitar Works in Kentucky are trying to restore it and put it back together. This is um, a reissue just like his. Um, we sent it to Cobra right away too to beat up. We didn't, we didn't tell Gibson that we did that, but... Uh, this, so Rich likes kind of the real worn in feel yeah he loves you know you know having the you know having the neck you know all, all sanded off mm -hmm. and when i said cobra really gives some mojo to the guitars you know brand new guitar always kind of feels weird mm -hmm. and um, he does a lot of you know secret stuff he rounds out the frets and you know um does the binding you know ages the binding and what gauge strings does, does rich usually prefer 10 to 46 ghs boomers on everything, um, even the low tunings, we tune some guitars down to F, and we still use the 10 to 46. Mm -hmm. And um, this one, just like that, 335 is a uh, is um, a Rich Robinson prototype. Now that Gibson's going to make, um, it's the same thing. It's 1963, um, exact exact replica of the one that we lost in the mm -hmm. um, in the flood. And this is, is this a backup to the other one? Um, no, we use them both of them. Okay. We use we use these a lot, but this this one we just haven't brought to Cobra yet. But <laughs> I don't know if I really want to. It's a really beautiful guitar, and it's um, and it's great. It's it's just like it's '63, almost exactly. It feels like it, the neck and everything. So, um, Mike Volts, Gibson, Nash, um, in Memphis, they made this guitar for him. They're called Thai guitars, and um. He, he hand makes them in um, Austin, Austin, Texas. The guy is really amazing. Him and uh, he's got you know some people working with him. He does all the engraving himself, all of the um, every little thing, all the all the inlays. You can see in the pack. And I know these are special because they have a mood knob. They have. You're, you're exactly right. There's the mood knob. Mm -hmm. And oh, do you know how Rich usually kind of tweaks that? Or everything full up. Oh yeah. <laughs> everything up. Yeah, that's that's the mood right there. So we just um, everything we at rich rich plays, um, bridge pickup, mm -hmm. full on. <laughs> we got three of these, and on the way this is the Perla that they make, 
um, we use this one on Wiser Time. This one, the one we just looked at, we use on um, Remedy, mm -hmm. and that's the G tuning um, with capo on the third fret. So this is Wiser Time. Oh, you can see he really wears out the frets here with the slide. <laughs> see, I have to ch I change the strings on this one after he gets one song out of it. Mm -hmm. So I change them every day. And this this one's really this is only one of two. And it's called the um, El Dorado. And Ty's only made two of these so far. Um, custom engraving, and Rich gave him a picture. So Ty, <laughs> you can see all if you can see that, but I don't know how long it took him, but he he engraved the exact picture. It really looks nice. Really nice inlay work they do. It's really they're great guitars, and they feel good. They play great. Um, I can't remember what pickups he uses. I think he uses Lawler pickups in them. Uh, the Eldorado you just showed us, what does Rich use that on each night? Um, we usually keep that in standard tuning. I try to keep the guitars in in, in one tuning. Mm -hmm. You know, I, tr I set them up for it because we use a lot of G, um, standard, and F. So I try to keep them in one tuning. Um, so that one we use for hard to handle anything in standard tuning. Were these acquired post-flood or these survive this as well? Everything you're seeing is... Um, is post flood. Okay. You know, luckily these weren't these weren't in there. That would that would have been a real disaster. Mm -hmm. um, this this was something that um, Rich had a, a Mary Kay Strat that we we lost in the flood, and I sent it to Fender, and they made an exact replica of the Mary Kay that he lost down to. Um, they, they really um. The dings and nicks and everything. Every single one they did exact. <laughs> And this we're going to use tonight for, um, let me look at that, oh, nonfiction. So it's the G tuning again, but with the capo on the third fret. And I really like these, um, these Ned Steinberger Planet Waves mm -hmm. capos. They're, they're, they're really great. Um, so I'm trying to use those as much as possible. And this, this was another one um, that Fender did for us after we had a B-Bender that was completely destroyed and they couldn't put it back together and they made us... Um, just a brand new B-Bender for Rich. Um, we wanted kind of like an Esquire. Rich, even though he doesn't use it, Rich always likes the humbucker in the, mm -hmm. in the neck position. And it's the Fender B-Bender system, which is pretty cool. We're not, you can see it back there, how it, how it works, but we're not using it as a B-Bender right now. It's been so good. We're using it on so many songs that um, we're, we're not using the B-Bender mechanism. Mm -hmm. But the guitar sounds great, and it looks really cool. And this was um, our main guitar for a while. It was one of the first ones we got after the flood. Um, we got it from um, our friend Teddy at Making Music in Chicago, and it's just a 52 um, Fender reissue Telecaster. I put um, an Arcane pickup in it. Mm -hmm. um, we found the Arcane pickups because James Troussard was using them, and we really liked what Rob did. So Rich had me put a, them in every guitar. Actually, I put one in the, in the Strat, too. It has um, an Arcane pickup in the, in the bridge there. And some of the other ones. So this has the arcane pickup, and we're not using it as much since the B bender's really taken over the, as the main as the main telly for us. So here you have a, a Gretsch that you mentioned was in the flood. This this one really got got it bad. This was right in the front door, um, and when um, when I got to it, it took us you know a few days to finally be able to even get to the warehouse, probably almost a week to get to the stuff. And um, this was a beautiful. It's called the Streamliner. We got it from. Um, um, Matt Brewster, 30 Street Guitars in New York, and it was a really special guitar, and Rich loved it. And um, it was all split; the binding was broken. Um, I never thought we'd see it again. And Steve Stern, um, the, you know, the guy at Gretsch, he's the man at the custom shop, and he put it back together for us. And he called me up and he said, "I don't know if I want to refinish it because it looks pretty cool, <laughs> how it is." So he sent some pictures, and it looked good. And uh, I was like, "Yeah, send it." And we're using this all the time. I mean, you could still see all the crud on there you know this was you know co you know covered in corrosion battle scars and yeah <laughs> this this poor baby and pickups pickups they saved and um you know they redid some of his hardware and he did a mm -hmm. he did a fret job and it's back and um, better than ever and it's well, some added great. mojo yeah it's whatever whatever the, you know whatever you know hit it it really just the stuff sounds better now than it mm -hmm. did before and it was always a great sounding guitar um and we're glad to have it back. And they have a country gentleman that hopefully we're going to get back soon from Gretsch. Oh, great. And what does he use this on every night? 
We're going to use this tonight on Feathers, but he uses this on a, a lot of songs. Um, let me think. Um, Good Morning, Captain. And anything he can. Anything that gets really loud with a lot of feedback. And Rich is able to control the feedback really well on a hollow body guitar. Something I can't do, but he could really crank it up. Mm -hmm. um, and when you guys, when the band decides on a set list every night, is it something where you kind of know where, okay, if this song is in, it's going to be this guitar, like you said, does it, does Rich come by and just make notes before the show? Um, I've been with them so long now that I usually make the, make the basic list out, and if there's one or two, they, they change the set every night. There's a lot of new songs, like, you know, so today they played No Speak, No Slave, and Soundcheck, they haven't played that in a couple of months. So, you know, I'll just see, you know, what he wants to use for that, but I'll just look to see what he used the last time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's conflicts if he wants to use the same guitar and there's the same, tu you know, a different tuning between songs we have to adjust, but mm -hmm. he trusts me enough to make, you know, to decide what guitar mm -hmm. is for what. And sometimes if he just hasn't played something in a while, he'll, he'll want to use that. This is um, a Japanese Black Falcon, which um, we immediately sent to Cobra. <laughs> and uh, he added a little uh, armrest plate there. Um, this is another great guitar. Rich just loves the Gretsch guitars. He's just a big fan of them. You know, Cobra did a little painting back there. Could the, um, how have you ever seen in the Black Falcons how bright they are? I mean, they're, they're blinding almost when you get them. So I don't know what he did if he painted over it. He really dulled it out. Like a matte finish. Yeah, exactly. And um, <laughs> it's, Rich just loves what he does to them. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is open G as well? Oh no, this is going to be shine along. This is in a weird C. It goes all the way down to C. C octaves, C, C, E, G, C, E. And used for what tune again? Shine along. Okay. These are um, Japanese um, Zematis guitars. Um, Rich had original ones, but he had, he had, um, he had sold them over the years. Mm -hmm. And um, they made a prototype out of one of his, um, early, his original one. And um, they're really amazing guitars. They really feel and sound really good, I'm very close to the original um, Tony Zematis. And they did a um, you know, special plate for Rich, and this was on, um, our other Japanese one was in the flood, so I took the plates off and sent them to the Zematis. You can see they did a little special Rich Robinson thing there. So they put the plates on a new one, and um, I've done some aging on it. Um, a guy named Josh Grove, who does Protocaster guitars in Brooklyn, did some aging on this as well, and it's kind of really nice. Mm -hmm. You can see that on the back. Um, Danny O'Brien did all the engraving, and he did the original Zematis mm -hmm. um, guitars as well. It seems like between the, the Zematis and the Tay and the Truss Art, there's certain engraving or metal things that Rich really yeah, likes on his guitars. He likes guitars really beat up, like the Streamliner, and then he loves these you know, really kind of ornate ones. Yeah. Which, um, but he still likes, you know, as soon as he gets something new like this, he said, you know, it up. Beat it up, yeah. yeah, which is good. So you know, if I <laughs> if I make a mistake and bang it somewhere, it's not such a big deal. If I did right. it to one of the Thai guitars, he would notice <laughs> <laughs> as we hit it with a microphone. This metal front Zematis, and this was um, another Japanese one that they gave us. And this, I just plugged it in. I mean, I kind of I cleaned everything off as fast as possible. But this guy, I just wiped it off, plugged it in, and it worked. Hmm. Don't ask me why. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't even change any of the pots. And it was, the guitar was just fine. I cleaned them out, mm -hmm. but that was it. I didn't even need to do the fretboard. So it was really, most of the guitars were in cases like this. So, you know, they were completely submerged. Um, I can't remember if this was in um, a, different, a different case or not, mm -hmm. but for, for some reason it survived. And uh, we don't use it as much. I use it um, in the crew band <laughs> more. And it has all the yeah, nice engraving on it too. They're great guitars. And since the flood, have you guys, have you developed different ways of storing and yeah. carrying the guitar yeah. so in case this were to happen again? Yeah, um, higher ground. <laughs> I mean, it was, a, it was a one in a million that yeah. it happened, you know, there was a full moon and just, it was, it was crazy about the storm and a lot of other bands had their stuff in the warehouse as well. We've, we've had it, we worked with these people for over 10 years, we've had our stuff in the same place. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, higher ground, <laughs> that's the only <laughs> advice I could give. <laughs> Um, beautiful Troussart guitar. Um, it's called the Senegal. Um, we've worked with James for a long time, and he's, um, does, you know, Rich has designed a few guitars with him, um, special guitars. Um, and this one, what are we using this one on tonight? We're using this one on Been a Long Time Waiting on Love, and it's a 
it's a pretty interesting tuning too. Mm -hmm. you see, it's really beautiful. It's just all the nice wood that um, James uses. He's known for his metal guitars, but um, Rich really loves the the wooden guitars that he makes. They're just really great. And what you said, this is a special tuning. Yeah, what tuning? Been a long time waiting on love, so I'm gonna remember it's C G C G A sharp E. You know, and when you know, at the volume he plays that when he hits those low notes, it really um it really shakes up the place. <laughs> <laughs> Another flood survivor. I didn't realize how many survived. This is um original Dan Armstrong pickup. Um Dan Armstrong guitar with a Holmes pickup in it. This one I had to have the um the frets redone on it. But other than that, you know, the plexiglass had survived and we um changed the pots mm -hmm. as well. And Manny Salvador, who works um at David Gage's bass shop in New York, did the fret job on it. And you know, and the pickup was still fine. It was amazing. And this is an original. Um, I replaced the the bridge just for more, um, you know, to get the intonation better on mm -hmm. it. And, um, and what's this one used on? It could be used on anything. We haven't used it um, that often, but it sounds great for a, a plexiglass guitar. It really sounds good. And, you know, a lot of it is that Holmes pickup. Yeah. This is um 1960 Relic, um, Strad Relic, with um, we put an Arcane Humbucker in there. Um, you don't use this all that much. Um, we use it on descending. It's pretty much in, in open E. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what I have it in now. I think I just have it standard. I'm not sure what it's in. But um, it's got a, a coil tap. We never use it. So just like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> all on. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's a really it's a cool looking guitar. It feels great. And was this relic by Fender? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right out. Yeah, we got it at Making Music and it was pretty much right out of the case. Mm -hmm. 12 strings, we don't use too much. Um, mm -hmm. Dan Electro, brand new, and a um, Gretsch Country Gentleman 12 string. Oh, yeah. but they're, and they're for electric 12 string songs, are those have those creeped into the set? They do not much. Um, and they use the um, Dan Electro 12 string on Fearless. It's um, a Pink Floyd song from metal, which we all love. Mm -hmm. And they don't play it enough. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some acoustics right. up here. Let's check these out. Yeah, this is, um, we just got this from Groons. It's a um, Martin um, Quad O21. Um, they made these um, guitars for George out of from George's specifications. We just walked in one day and went upstairs, and George showed us a couple of guitars, and uh, we ended up leaving with this one. And this one's actually kind of important because um, he uses it for. Um, she talks to angels. <laughs> It's an open E tuning as well. E, B, E, G sharp, B, E. So, um, just a um, couple months old. Mm -hmm. Beautiful guitar. Not relic No, not yet. He wants to. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to relic everything. A Zematis um, acoustic. It's one of the, um, the newer ones. We've probably had it for about five or six years. Um, I mean, we're just using it as a backup now for, um, for angels. Mm -hmm. But... Um, these were made in England or Ireland. I think Loudon was making them for Zemanus, and it's just, it sounds great, it feels good. Um, and also, when we went to, um, went, we went to Groons that day, there, um, the, um, one of the techs had recommended these K and K pickups. I was using um, LR Bags pickups in it, which are in our 12 string, and he kept on hitting it because the sound hole was so weird. Rich kept hitting that the pickup in there, so we put these K and K pickups in it which um, Gruen's recommended, and they, they sound really good. Mm -hmm. So that's what's in the um, Auto 21 for Angels and the, for this guy. And this, um, this one really got it bad in the, in the flood, and um, we sent it to Guild, and a guy named Chris Seeger put it all back together for us, so when I, um, Covered in mold, um, everything was was split apart. It, I mean, it didn't look like you could do anything with it. And all you had to do, you put a new fretboard on and a new back. Um, it's a '76 F112. The sides are all original. The fronts original. You could see. And he even went as far. He went as far as doing every tuner and clean <laughs> and cleaning every tuner up on it. Um, we have some really great pictures of what it looked like before we sent them there. And 
it's the guitar just sounds and probably won't, I don't know if it's in tune. Another example of it sounding better mm -hmm. after the flood. We don't know why. <laughs> what tune does Rich pull this one out on? Um, we, we use this on um, Woe Mule, mm. and that's tuned to E as well. They're not playing it tonight, but um, it's open E. And we really like this LR Bags M80 pickup. It just sounds great. Um, I'm trying to get him to use it on more of the guitars. <laughs> so here we are out front. Um, we have his amps and his rack, and he keeps all of his pedals in a rack on stage rather than in a rack by you. Right. So tell us a little bit about uh, the reasoning behind that and then walk us through what he has here. Okay, this is, um, this whole thing was made by Mark Snyder um, of the Red Hook Winery. <laughs> but Mark um, put all this together for us because we needed something new before the tour. Everything got ruined right before we about, right when they announced they were going back on the road. So I had about three months to put everything together, which isn't a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So Mark built this for us. Um, everything is controlled by his foot switch in, in front of his microphone. Um, we use a lot of these way huge pedals. He, um, Rich really loves these. Um, George Trips makes them in Dunlop. Um, you know, Dunlop's probably um, making them and selling them now, but they're originally made by George Trips. Um, Angry Troll is pretty much all we really use. When um, he need, just needs a little more boost when he's playing slide, he uses that. That's the pedal that's used mostly. And the Red Llama. Um, these guys, not so much. But um, they're really good. They're, they're loud and the, Bang Control is really clean. And it's a really nice clean. Big Muff back there too as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't want to forget the Big Muff. The Big Muff, Muff the Big Muff. The Big Muff is used um, a lot as well. Um, that's when it gets really, really loud. <laughs> <laughs> and he is the only person in the world that control, could control a Big Muff and a Gretsch hollow body. <laughs> <laughs> and th that's really the main things. It's really usually the troll you're hearing when he's playing slide and, um, and a lead. Here's some more. We'll use the Univibe once in a while. We like the Super Puss. The El Capistan is a great um, backup for one of the, the tube tape, tape echoes. It really sounds great. Um, this is an old tremolo, which Rich has used for years, just um, the flips. And we could always use more if anyone ever sees them, because they don't make them anymore. And it's a Dem Demeter Tremulator, which um, we don't use too much. And down here... We just got this, the Strymon pedal, which you heard today on No Use Lying. Um, it's, it's just like a, it's a Leslie simulator. It mm -hmm. sounds really good. We have the um, expression pedal down there to make it faster and slower. So um, that right now that's all it's used for. We've only had it for about a week since they've been playing that song again. Mm -hmm. since it just came out. And this is a great, this is something great, which everyone should have. Um, Mark Snyder, who made the, the rack, does the Frampton pedals. He makes all the stuff for Peter Frampton. So this is our amp, amp splitter device. So um, oh, this is the last thing in the rack, and it goes right out to both amps. It goes out to the, the Reason and to the Vox, and to an amplifier over there so Jackie and Sven could hear the guitars as well. So you use an actual guitar amp for a monitor over yeah, there? Yeah, <laughs> it's going through an AC30 or an AC15. I can't remember what we put over there. Mm -hmm. I have an AC-15 somewhere, which I should get back, but what's great about this is it has ground lifts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so when you're using three amps, you, you hear how it is when it's not lifted, and it goes away. Mm -hmm. And it also, inside it, it has a, a phase reversing switch, because sometimes when you're using t two different types of amps, the, the phase is different in them, and normally you'd have to go in there and change it. Um, switch the cable around and then you can just go right into the Fram tone and switch it. Um, sure. It's much quicker and you don't have to solder anything or redo mm -hmm. anything. And so this is really um, indispensable. And is there That's a particular right. reason why this would be up here with his amps? Does he like to sometimes tweak the knobs on these or? No, he rarely tweaks anything. Okay. He rarely tweaks and both amps when we get to that are on all the time. There's, there's no amp switching involved. And the most important thing here are our full tone um, tube tape, tape echoes. Um, Rich really uses these a lot. Um, this guy's just a really quick, um, just for a slap back. Um, echo 2 and Echo 1 is for a longer, a longer delay. And it's also good to have two of them in case sometimes the tapes get jammed. I, I do a lot of um, maintenance on these, just keeping the heads clean, new tapes a lot. So if one does get jammed during a show, we can just switch over to the other one. And I have a third one sitting by me just in case. Mm -hmm. um, big part of the show, great sound, and 
the new full tones are pretty reliable compared to the old original echo plexes which we had to have a lot of um always have to have a lot of work done on them mm -hmm. um these have been great and just a um a reverb tank reissue fender reverb tank this is um obviously where all the pedals and the rack are controlled from it's an access electronics um midi foot controller we don't use any of the midi but we just use um you know rich could plug rich could hit any combination of all of his pedals and with one switch with with one switch it'll turn on any we don't we don't really use it too much um, he really just only uses the troll and the llama and the echoes and he could usually do those by himself but it makes things a lot easier just having this instead of all the pedals in front of you and having all the pedals in a loop yeah. is much better as well since we have so many pedals you're bypassing them um, just a regular Dunlop volume pedal which are great um, it's the Strobe Classic. It's um, the Peterson Strobe Tuner, which hopefully he won't use too much. Um, I do most of the tuning, so if you see him tweaking... Um, Sums up. Yeah, but, but they're good. Um, they're really accurate. Um, the Digi Digitech Whammy we don't use too much. Um, it's a full-tone Clyde Wah pedal, which um, Rich really, really loves. Um, we'll be using that a lot tonight. And um, the DI is for the acoustics, and that's um, Obed Khan, who does the Reason Amps, makes these. And it's, it's actually a bass DI, but we're using it for the acoustic guitars, and we're using it for Jackie's mandolin as well. Mm -hmm. And it sounds great. Um, tube DI, and our sound guy loves it. And um, really important changes, you know, really made everything sound a lot better once we put, once we put those in, in, um, in line. And the, the um, Boss Tuner is just um, really used as a mute for the acoustic. Mm -hmm. Pete Cornish made this. Um, he probably he got he made this in '98. So Rich probably got it when they did the Jimmy Page Black Rose tour, which I wasn't on. And it's a guitar selector and line driver. So um, I always give Rich a guitar for the next song with with a cable in it. Mm -hmm. So all he has to do is turn on his volume, and um, so that you know this works you know as you know almost as an AB box, and it just gives a you know a bit of extra um, hit on the front end. All right, so next tell us about the amps here. So over here he has the, the Rich Robinson's signature Reason amp. Tell us a little bit about how he started working with Reason and, and what he particularly likes about this amp. Yeah, Reason is, um, it was an interesting story. We were playing in St. Louis at the pageant, and I went into um, Killer Vintage Guitars, which is a place we always go to when we're in St. Louis. I don't know if you know those guys, Dave Henson. And one of the guys who works there, Jimmy, was like, you got to hear this amp, you got to hear this amp. And like, we ran out of stores. Like whenever somebody says you got to hear this amp, you know we hear amps all the time. And as I was walking out the door, he started playing it, and I said, turned around, I said, bring it over, and I we brought it over and I put it on top of um, Rich's rig, what he was using, and it's, it was there ever since. And we lost our original ones in the flood, and for this tour reason made um, the Signature 50. Um, Rich had a stere an old stereo system he liked. I can't remember what it was. And he sent them a picture of the stereo, mm -hmm. and they kind of duplicated and made it look like um, like the hi-fi that Rich had. <laughs> um, and it's um, we're just using the bottom the bottom spe um, the bottom cabinet now. Mm -hmm. And it's got we used to have a um, a subwoofer on stage, so Rich could you know f you know feel you know feel the amps a little more. And these guys made a ported you know, it's a little port down there. So there's there's a little more bass response down there and you can, you could feel it in your feet when you know when he's playing. And there's um eminence, what are they, private jack speakers in there. It's like sixteen ohm speakers. So that's uh, just the bottom one. We haven't we haven't we haven't used both yet. <laughs> and on this side we have a fiftieth anniversary Vox. Tell us about this one. Um just a hand wired Vox, um brand new. Um he really likes the sound of the um, EL84s and the EL34s together. It just is a really nice blend, and keep both of them on all the time. You know, our sound guy probably does a little mixing during solos um, between the both of them. But it's, it's the whole sound is really both of, both of these amps. And then we have the baffles too, which are which are pretty important. Um, they're made by um, Anthony Bonadio, who makes the cabinets. Um, he's a company called Stagecraft, and they make these baffles. And they, they're really good um, when we're playing smaller places, um, mm -hmm. so the front house guy doesn't get blasted, so the kids in the front don't get blasted, because you know, the band's pretty loud. Um, quieter these days, but, uh, but these help. So here we don't have to worry about it too much, but I have them out there just in case. Mm -hmm. All right, Doug, you also have this book here, The Guitarist's Guide to Maintenance and Repair. So tell us a little bit about uh, this book and kind of who it's aimed at. Uh, Attack to the Stars. So Excuse me, Tech to the Stars. Um, yes. How to maintain. Um, well, I started doing a, um, a very basic guitar seminar teaching musicians how to 
do really easy repairs on the guitars, how to string your guitar, how to do intonation, and um, just real basic setups instead of giving you know, people like me lots of money to do these things. Just do it at home, and it's, it's, it's fun, it's easy, and it's like just tear apart your own guitar and, and make it feel like how you want to. And my friend Dave Rubin came to this, and Dave's a writer for Hal Leonard. He's written many books for them for years and years, and he said, I think we get a book out of this. And we ended up just taking what I, what I did in the seminar and um, putting it into words. Um, Rich Robinson um, wrote the forward, which is really nice and funny. Uh, my friend Jeff Thal, a great guitar player, wrote the other forward. And um, it's usually step by step on how to work on your own guitar. Little, um, some funny road stories in there. Mm -hmm. I kept it clean. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, the, the dirty parts will be in the next book if we, uh, if we get there. And um, mostly a lot of, of things which had gone wrong on the road and how I fixed them, you know, like gluing Audley, fi Audley Freed's fingers back together and, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's, it's good and people seem to really like it. Mm -hmm. So, And you can imagine get this through Hal Leonard as well? Through Hal Leonard and also I, I have a website, it's called GoTechYourself, GoTechYourself.com. <laughs> and um, you could get it through there as well, it'll direct you to um, Music Dispatch mm -hmm. and it's also on Amazon. So Excellent, Doug. Well, thank you so much for awesome. walking us through Rich's gear. Thanks. This is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com.